Parenthood is beautiful. It's nothing like raising a child of your own. But for some, it can be a nightmare. This dude is over here wilding. I, I can't take this anymore. They will just not stop crying. I just need a break. I need to get out of the house. I don't know how much longer you could put up with that shit. And it's only gonna keep getting worse if you keep letting it happen. I hear you. I told you you could come stay here. Are you sure? I I don't want to be a burden. Girl, you're not a bother at all, ever. Just pack up and come stay for a couple of days. All right, perfect. I got to run to work, so I'm going to leave a key under the front mat. Just come grab it whenever you're ready. Okay. fucking phone I keep on calling you you're not answering the phone the baby will not stop crying I need your fucking help answer the phone At the tone, please record your message. hey Chris it's, it's me I'm really really going through it I have the baby I really need your help can you please call me as soon as you get a chance her dad is not fucking answering the phone and I just need, I need a friend or somebody. Can you please give me a call back? Hey girl, it's Tessa. Can you please give me a call? Pick up your fucking phone. I keep calling you. You're not answering your fucking phone. Your daughter is not, she will not stop crying. Answer your fucking phone. It can get to the point where you can do harm, you know, to your child. Not, might not be on purpose, but, you know, you could be neglectful towards your baby, you know, not wanting to feed or, you know, take care of them the way that you're supposed to be, you know, as a mother. But, um, there were a couple instances where, you know, I would leave my son unattended talk about something like i enjoy you coming to the crib and stuff man but if you're gonna be staying over and something you're gonna have to clean up your hair man 
Man, you're going to have to wear a hat net or something. You got OCD or something? Also, what? The fuck you call me? Hello. Did you get my message? I need the baby to stay with you a couple days. saying bro like we gonna have to figure something out what the hell i think i see chris's cousin standing in the middle of the street chris cousin who you talking about tessa what the now nah, don't worry about it i'll text her right now all right Hi friends, that is a wrap on our postpartum episode. We are here now for a little bit of commentary just to talk about the signs and symptoms of postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis. And then hear a little bit from our main character, Jessica, about her personal experience with uh, postpartum depression. A little bit about postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis. When we consider these diagnoses, there's really three levels. Um, we touch on, on two here because those are formal diagnoses, but really before before we get to a formal diagnosis, um, we have what's called just baby blue symptoms. So, you know, this is not a mental health diagnosis. It's a collective of symptoms that, you know, doctors and professionals have said many women after giving birth may experience. When we consider baby blue symptoms, we're looking at symptoms that are really not too intense. They may be a little bit intrusive, but they're lasting a few days to about two weeks after our delivery. Some of those symptoms would include mood swings, anxiety, sadness, irritability, feeling overwhelmed, crying, reduced concentration, appetite problems, trouble sleeping. So a lot of the symptoms are similar to what we would identify as postpartum depression symptoms. But when we're considering postpartum depression, we want to acknowledge the fact that that's going to be more intense 
the frequency is going to occur more often, and the symptoms are going to last longer. With postpartum depression, it may um, onset within the first week, and it could last all the way up through the first year. So when we consider symptoms of postpartum depression, uh, we're looking at depressed mood, severe mood swings, excessive crying, difficulty bonding with your baby, feeding your baby, withdrawing from friends and family, loss of appetite or eating too much, inability to sleep or sleeping too much, overwhelming fatigue or loss of energy, thoughts of harming yourself or your baby, reduced interest and pleasure in activities that you used to enjoy, intense irritability or anger, you notice yourself snapping, fear that you're not a good mother, hopelessness, feelings of worthlessness, shame, guilt, or inadequacy, diminished ability to think clearly, concentrate, or make decisions, restlessness, severe anxiety or panic attacks, or recurrent thoughts of death or sleep. With those two recurrent thoughts of death or sleep, and also thoughts of harming self or harming your baby. If those symptoms were to arise, that would warrant, you know, really seeking professional help at that point because you are having thoughts of harm to yourself or to someone else, which necessitates a crisis situation. Those are some of the symptoms of postpartum depression. And again, really just paying close attention to how often are they happening? How intense are they? and how long are these episodes lasting before you know we're able to come back to some sort of emotional baseline finally we have postpartum psychosis which is rare usually postpartum psychosis will onset in the first week of childbirth and this is really also a crisis situation it's a critical moment uh, because many times with postpartum psychosis, any sort of psychosis, right, this is a break with reality. So not being able to make decisions, um, possibly hallucinating, having delusions, um, confusion, disorientation, what people would maybe term as brain fog, having obsessive thoughts about your baby, sleep disturbances, you know, that are lasting days, weeks. Uh, excessive energy or agitation, paranoia, or of course attempts to harm self or harm the baby. So we know with postpartum depression that that is typically something we associate with women, but it's true that men can also get postpartum depression. So it is a life transition, you know, whether you're a new mom or a new dad, so if you are a male or know a male who may be suffering from postpartum depression, some of the symptoms do include irritability, restricted emotions, and feeling down or hopeless. You may also look for changes in pattern like weight gain, overeating, not eating, um, not participating in activities that used to be of interest to that person. Some of the risk factors for men who are more likely to get postpartum depression would include history of depression, either in themselves or with another family member, uh, poverty, and also hormonal changes. Postpartum depression is very common. Um, unfortunately, we don't hear a lot about it, so you don't realize how common it, it is. I have two children. I have a nine-year-old. I have an eight-month-old baby. When I had my first daughter, I never went through postpartum depression. Um, I never experienced it, didn't know what to expect. Here we are later, I have an eight-month-old baby, and let me just tell you, it is something you can't really prepare yourself for. Um, you know, your body goes through a ton of different things um, but your hormone imbalance you know you don't really prepare for that when I had my eight month old baby some of the symptoms that I experienced uh, one of the biggest ex symptoms was you know feeling like I was walking with a, just a gray cloud following me everywhere I went I could not stop crying uncontrollably you know out of nowhere another symptom I had was you know having unrealistic thoughts you know you, you almost you are almost outside of your 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 realm your reality you know here i am trying to cope with 
having two children. You know, I went from being a single mother of one to a single mother of two. And it is not easy, you know? And even women that have um, help have their significant other there, you can still go through postpartum depression. This is a real, real, you know, mental illness. I do want to say now moving forward that I have been able to get over that, you know, and I have been able to pick the pieces up of, you know, my life and been able to, you know, realize that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Postpartum depression does not last forever. The feelings that you have and the things that you are experiencing will go away. Some of the ways that I found that helped me get through it, having a, a great support system, you know, not keeping it to myself. I broke down to my friends, to my family, to my doctor. You know, I was letting whoever, you know, close to me know something isn't right. You know, there, there is no reason that I should be so sad. And, you know, when you're sad, that now leads to angry. Now I'm angry with myself. Why am I not more, why am I not happy that I just had another baby? Why am I experiencing all this anxiety, all this depression, this anger, instead of enjoying what blessing, you know, I have. I say all that to say that some of the things that you can do and that you should do is just speak about it, talk about it, you know, let somebody that you feel comfortable with no. Um, and the other thing, vitamin D, get out of the house, you know, get some sunshine. Don't coop yourself up in the house with the babies, with the kids. You've got to get out. Um, you know, those are just some things that, that really helped me. And honestly, just talking about getting over it right now is also still, you know, healing for me. It's very healing. I hope that just hearing me talk about my own personal experience can help you or can help your friend, you know. Um, just let them know they're not alone and you will be okay. You are gonna get through it. It's not gonna last forever. Don't be ashamed. Don't be scared to, um, you know, fall into even deeper, you know, in it. Just talk, let it out and know that you are not alone. Nobody thinks that you are crazy because we understand that this is real.